Philadelphia sports fans, I am Anthony Pinto. And I am Greg Hall. Welcome to the War Room. We are War Room Philly. Uh, Greg, how you doing today? I don't know. <laughs> through, through, through all this, through the, through, through the shaky start that we've had already. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're 20 minutes, 20, 22 minutes behind, and we just had the weirdest draft. I can never remember. Yeah. And there are still no live sports. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, how about that? What a what a crazy you know we're doing the show Friday and I'm like my biggest concern was how are we going to be able to do 4 hours and make it not feel like we did 4 hours. That was the we easy part. Done. That, yeah, that, that, that was the easiest of parts. It was flying by. It was so much fun and then the Eagles picked. And it was all downhill. Uh, and and I still stand by. I liked that first pick a little yeah. bit. I'll get into it. Let's not jump down my throat yet, chat. Um, but I now seeing the whole thing unfold, whew, just I liked I liked the uh, what was the last day Saturday? I liked Saturday. That was good. Yeah, yeah. You day know? one and day three definitely had its highs and lows. More highs than lows, yeah. but day two is up for debate. Is it? Big, big time. That <clears throat> that that round two and three, which I'm sure we're gonna cover everything tonight. But holy bejeebus! Like, I don't know where to start. Uh, yeah, to me, there's no debate. It was all bad the first the <laughs> first two couple of days. To be honest with you, um, but yeah, we'll get into it. I guess I know there's there's I a. A lot of arguments to be had, um, and they've been coming in in all shapes and sizes. Um, I love the Rager pick because I like Jalen Rager a lot. It's just what could have been yeah. that bothers me. Yeah, and and that's the thing. I'm I'm so with you. We even talked about it. Um, you know, we we put the YouTube clip out too. Our live reactions. All three of us are like, basically, it's almost unanimous. We're like, this was a good pick, but where's the value? And, mm -hmm. and and just focusing on on the first round pick alone that's that's a big thing and then you get into the second round pick again forgetting everything value being off um, you had so, you had an edge rusher that was projected to go top 17 who fell to you at 21 you had the receiver that every single person originally mocked us with and who you know I know you were down on but that that's why I kind of realistically thought we were gonna grab he was available. And then you had the outside guys like the Ayuks and the Ragers that were the speed guys that, you know, were the wild cards. But apparently Howie had his little Billy Bean notepad or his draft day Kevin Costner notepad, I should say. And it said, did you see this? He had his notepad on draft night. He it oh, said, no, uh, no, I didn't. is he is he fast? <laughs> is he healthy? And does he love to play? And he said those were the three criteria we used all throughout draft night. So, you know, I guess mission accomplished from that perspective. But they, they got yeah. speed, and if there's one thing I'll say, I did. If there was, I, I, now I'm almost backtracking. I, all off season, I was like, "Get speed, get speed, get speed." Holy crap! Who knew Howie was such a fan of me? Uh, you could have gotten a little other. We didn't need just speed, uh, but but yeah. I mean, again, I like the regular pick. Mm -hmm. I I uh, I didn't really like uh, Jefferson who I think is going to be the next Nelson Aguilar. Um, some wow. People, some people, wow. Some people think that about Regor, though. So who, who am I? I? I don't know. Um, we'll see. Uh, but but Regor's a more polished route runner. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's I was like, I think Regor has the potential to be a, a busted Deshaun Jackson if you want to go the, a, a bad route, negative. I think he's yeah. going to be more the latter where he's going to be you know, I think I think Howie at least thinks that he's the next to Sean Jackson, and you know, again, I have no gripes with that if it if it lands. Uh, but Rager is like Rager is high ceiling, but kind of like low floor. Jefferson to me was high ceiling, high floor. It was almost kind of safe. You kind of know what you're yeah. getting. With Rager, he has potential to be a speed number one in this league, but he also has the potential to fall completely off the face of the earth and not really be much. So I understand bad quarterback play had a lot to do with, uh, you know, some of his statistics in 2019, 2018. He had a great year watching the tape. He, he jumps off the charts. He's phenomenal. Like 
watching that tape after we we signed off on Thursday night, I went back and I said, you know what? I I take it back after sleeping on it and watching probably an hour of highlights on YouTube. I love the pick at 21. It's the point where if your guy is there, they're going to get him. It, it To me, it didn't feel like a reach because he was going to go in the first round probably, probably where Ayuk went, and he's probably going to go there. And you know what? So we went a couple picks early. So what? I think, again, it's like the they could have had C.D. Lamb. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you didn't get that, so I was going to say, you know, and all that is well and good, and then you look and you see Dallas Cowboys got C.D. Yeah. Lamb. Not even that and the it's... Eagles could have. And then, and then, and then you go with <laughs> the fact that you could have given them, whoever your trade partner would have been, the second and third pick because both of those picks absolutely sucked. <laughs> so The A.J. Terrell, who the Falcons picked at 16, was a, was a reach, a definite reach at 16. He would have been there at 21, no doubt about it. You give up 21 and 53. Now hindsight is always 20-20, but if you told me you would give up J- uh, Jalen Rager and whomever the 53rd pick would have been given who we selected yeah. and I like Jalen Hurts as a player again just the value of it and we're probably going to spend the ma- majority of time talking about that pick tonight but um, yeah I do that in a heartbeat are you kidding me I would do that in a heartbeat we missed out on CD Lamb we could have jumped ahead spot ahead of the Cowboys now we don't know if Atlanta was looking for more we don't know if Atlanta was even willing Maybe they had a hunch that he wouldn't be there because Oakland, or sorry, Las Vegas selected a corner at 19. So maybe, just maybe, they had gone with the Falcons guy at 16. So maybe there was some dialogue there. So we'll never, ever know because yeah. no one's ever going to say a word. But yeah. to me, it's like the missed opportunity. Well, it's we, a what if. What well, we do know, and it was something that I was kind of harping on all, all night, was San Fran was willing and able to deal all night and all draft in fact they were moving picks moving players um yeah. so again i think that 13 was probably uh where the eagles needed to trade up for who knows maybe maybe one two and three gets you both of their first round picks uh and yeah and would have been again much better than uh jalen hurts and uh devon taylor uh, you know uh, the, the, the linebacker from uh colorado so uh, speed He's got speed. Yeah, yeah he's, know, he's he's a too, lightning quick linebacker. He's too big to be a linebacker, or too big to be a safety, and too small to be a linebacker. That's what I see. Um, yeah, Th- there's a, there was a lot of that in this draft in and, general, and and so. the Eagles made sure they got what three three of those kind of linebackers as well. Um, the the so. Eagles decided to take flyers, and this kid had a lot of fifth round, um, you know, mocks and and like uh, reports on him that that was probably a fifth round pick a day three pick but the eagle said nah chief that ain't it <laughs> not not the way we doing things this he's year he's going on day two oh. can i can i uh give a quick shout out to arguably the most important thing that happened on night number one of the draft what's that war room philly's an affiliate oh yeah 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 i mean don't this bury is the your lead. first show don't bury this the is lead. your first show this, as a twitch affiliate this is brother indeed. We, we've already earned one subscriber in in the uh in the time off it it was Jay Ziggy, a.k.a. my girlfriend, but, uh, hey, <laughs> I'll take that paycheck. <laughs> you guys put the Philly in affiliate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey-o. Absolutely. And those, oh, I wish I wish they came through already, but obviously with everything going on, and even Twitch was down earlier today, uh, yeah. it's, um, it, we don't have the subs loaded, there are the emotes loaded, but they're, they're coming. And yeah. uh, they're really sweet. I'll, uh, I'll maybe show you them. I'll send you a little screenshot a little later. The two Sweet. extra, the two extra ones. One, the standard, the standard is going to be our logo, and then we got two variant logos coming. Uh, use for, your, for, use your Twitch Prime sub on War Room, fella. Yeah, absolutely. If you know Amazon Prime, now is the perfect time to do it. Link it up. You know, it takes takes really uh, n- no like no time at all. Um, actually, who doesn't Jane, have Amazon Prime? Yeah, everyone's Every. got. I'm actually about to get rid of mine soon. It's coming up. May I think May eighth is my I got a decide date, and then I keep saying I'm going to get rid of it, and then I'm just going to not get rid of it. But it is and then 120 bucks later, you have it for another year. <laughs> yeah. But you get 12 free subs. <laughs> exactly. You know what? And that's that is one thing that I I like about it is like you know at least I can give a little back. Uh, I got right now it's GDQ. Uh, I do ESA page a lot too because they're always doing charity things. So I like to I like to act like my my sub is going to charity. 
Um, yeah, like every weekend ESA but, does something with it, whether it's you know BKG or ESA together. They just did. They're yeah. I love ESA. Man. Yeah, I mean I fall asleep to their YouTube channel like a lot, and then I wake <laughs> up to it too, which is awesome. Can but, can I give while it's just you and I talking speed running for just a second? I just oh, have a absolutely. small gripe. I've never said this on my show because I don't think Sam would would really care. <laughs> so I think this is the better audience. Um, the biggest pet peeve. I have when it comes to GDQ and I love it. I've been to them. Um, 2017 was one of the greatest five days of my life. Um, but my biggest gripe, and it might be just me is whenever I watch the VODs on YouTube of a GDQ or an ESA, r really any other marathon, RPG limit break or whatever, poke, uh, poke speed runs. GDQ is the only organization that puts the, the finishing time in the youtube title uh, and that bothers yeah. me because i don't want spoilers that's true that's like look that's the one spoiler we do care about as speed as like a speed running community every time like the the, the runner says spoilers it's you know always a joke uh yeah. but like yeah that's true i never thought about that but that's because that's the difference between a viewer and an actual runner because <laughs> you know I mean? like, i'm watching let's say it's a 45 minute run and it says you know vanilla bear 35 smb 64 70 star in 45 minutes yeah. and i'm like okay we're at 43 minutes i know it's ending soon i don't like that give me the estimate and that's all i would need because i know it's going to be around that yeah. so like that's what esa and the other ones do well they just say vanilla bear 35 super mar 64 70 star esa together 2020 and then they let me go yeah. I actually can't stand. So it's like this thing where whenever I go to a Games Done Quick VOD that I want to watch, I look off to the side <laughs> when I see it and like click it. And then I'll be like, all right, cool. And then I'll accidentally hit my iPad with my elbow and it'll show up for two <laughs> seconds. I'm like, God damn it. Now I know. And it takes some enjoyment out. I know I'm a loser. That's my rant. No, I like it. I like, I, I, uh, I'm always like the person that's like, don't tell me about the movie or like anything. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. That's, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, anyway, but back, back on top. I digress. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's uh, like I said, it's it's uh, and that's that's the Twitch Prime uh, uh, plug, by the way. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, getting back into it, um, we're gonna talk like you were saying a lot about these first, you know, two uh, more specifically, but first three picks. Um, but I want to, I want to be a little positive, and I do mean this. Look, I was I. I trollingly was saying how many wide receivers i wanted the eagles went out there and got them i do they appreciate sure that i really do and then and, and then one more <laughs> and they it, traded for another yeah and again the big thing being all i've been complaining about is we're slow at receiver um mm -hmm. and and yeah they've Slowest got league. they've got they've got speed there now they have insurance when deshaun jackson goes back down uh they have you know hopefully you can still figure out what What's what's up with Alshon Jeffrey? If you can get rid of him, maybe maybe he's gonna, Aguilar, he's gonna start the season on pup. He's gonna start the season. Yeah, on pup. maybe Aguilar was was the actual rat all along, but it, it feels like it was Jeffrey from all all yeah. sources and, and things said. Uh, and and in my opinion, that's just look. There's a, and again the second round pick. Like you got so many things constantly working against Carson Wentz. Why can't we be the Cowboys where we have Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, an elite running back? Like it's crazy. The Michael fact Gallup. That it's crazy the fact that the Cowboys are building a team around Dak, but the Eagles keep failing to realize they need to build this team around Carson Wentz, your centerpiece. And the ass backwards thing about that is that the Eagles have their franchise quarterback signed, and the Cowboys just franchise theirs and don't have him signed. So it's literally the opposite. It's, when it's, the, when the Eagles are trying to build wide receivers, the Cowboys are going to try and retain their quarterback, and they're going to have to pay him. Yeah. They're going to have to pay Gallup eventually. Zeke, I think Zeke got his money. I'm almost positive. Yeah, yeah. Zeke got his money. Uh, Amari got, got his, his money. money. So, so that means Gallup is might not stay because of the money they're going to have to give Dak. So that's something you can kind of look forward to in a year or two. Is um, Gallup's probably going to walk, and then CD is going to become your other, you know, your X receiver, and that's going to suck because that's going to be a big problem. Yeah. But at the same time, you know that the Dallas is not going to because they have no defense still. I mean, they did they had a great second round with Trayvon Diggs from Alabama. That's who I wanted. Um, I put that in the chat literally as he got taken, so that was that pissed me off. But uh, 
Dallas had it. Let's just call it what it is, man. They had a great draft. Yeah. But the but the beautiful thing, Anthony, about having a great draft, we won't know crap about it until a year or two or three. Very rarely do you see this come to fruition in year one. So as much as they had a great draft on paper, it has to translate to the field, just like the Eagles. Yeah. The one place I'm, I'm willing to bet it will translate, though, is CeeDee Lamb burning us at least twice this year. Once, once Deshaun always used to burn us. <laughs> Amari, Amari torches the yeah. Eagles. Yeah. He so, torches. So Except for the last game. We'll see. We did, you know, uh, the the secondary did get some adjustments this year, although, in my opinion, uh, you got rid of the wrong safety and you kept the wrong safety. Um, wow. You're a McLeod. You're a... You're a um, Jenkins, Let's Jenkins yeah, over yeah, I'm, McLeod. I'm a, I'm a big Jenkins fan. I realize McLeod is younger, but I don't know if that youth translates on paper with how many injuries he's already had in his his career. Um, Malcolm Jenkins you- leaving, and we'll see. And I know I'm not saying Malcolm Jenkins is Brian Dawkins, but it this feels very similar to the Brian Dawkins situation. Uh, I know I'm. S- completely off topic now uh just like no 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 not, not I, talking I, I, about uh the draft at all uh but that, that's a hard disagree for me though that's a hard <clears throat> disagree that that jenkins is like the closest he is in situation the closest thing to dawkins but that's the player it, that's what, again that's what i'm saying he's not brian dawkins let me make that clear i'm not comparing him to brian dawkins um Maybe however from a leadership perspective however i do think that we hadn't had a legitimate safety since Brian Dawkins until Malcolm Jenkins. Um, and while Jenkins is a pro bowler, he is not one of the greatest that ever played the position. Like Hall Dawkins. of Famous. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, to, to call Dawkins a Hall of Famer almost feels like it's, it's not doing him justice. I have to make sure he is one of the greatest at his position. And, and right. Jenkins is not that. However, well, again, we have- from a leadership and kind of just – uh, you know the way he he totally reworked that that secondary kind of around him the ability to be there every down um i, I would have went with him over mcleod we'll, we'll see at time yeah. will tell and well and mcleod's Saints, younger Saints and he's cheaper he's gonna be damn good he's younger and he's cheaper mcleod <laughs> yeah. and he and he held his own he's not a bad player i think like howie the picks, and I know he had a, a bad end to his tenure here but the the free agent signings like nigel bradham like uh, like Rodney McLeod, the old Buffalo Bills scrap heap. I love, see, as a Bills guy, like I loved how he's small moves there in like 16 is when he had the really, really good offseason when he took it all back from Chip. And, and like that to me, McLeod is a good serviceable player. My other worry is Jalen Mills on the other side. Like yeah. I'm fine with Rod. I, I'm not fine with <clears throat> Jalen Mills. I understand the money that, that, that Jenkins wanted, we don't know the hell, the real reason, whether it was to give Carson the full reign, which, you know, round two, uh, or or to give, um, you know, less money to position as Jalen's only at $5 million. But let's not forget, we drafted Kayvon Dawkins, baby. Kayvon Dawkins <laughs> yes. from Clemson. Yeah. Uh, Kayvon Wallace, the safety yeah. from Clemson. He's going to be a good player. He, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, compare Jenkins to Dawkins. However, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, this rookie that hasn't played a game, he's the next Brian Dawkins. Just like, um, oh, what's the lineman that broke uh, Reggie White's record? Uh, Barnett? Not Barnett. Uh, it's close. Definitely not. Uh, Derek, uh, Derek, the rookie. He's not even a rookie anymore, like three years ago now. Is it Derek? Are you talking about Derek Barnett? Derek Barnett. There we go. Yeah, yeah. He was the one that the lineman from Tennessee, right? Yeah, 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 he recovered broke, the fumble broke, on the Super Bowl. Broke Reggie White's record and everything. All we heard was broke Reggie White's sack record. Blah, blah, blah. Hasn't got oh, you a, mean in college? Hasn't got a sack since, yeah, yeah, in college. God, yeah, I yeah. thought you meant at the pros. I'm like, uh, uh, No, the dude hasn't got a sack yet in the pros. But he well, has, I think they he just did, extended he did recover his fifth-year option. Um, they just picked up his fifth-year option. Yeah, he's been so. very injured. Uh, he's a guy that's like close but no cigar when you watch him. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Um, he's, you know what he is? You know what he is? <laughs> he's a little better than Kyle. He's just a little better than Kyle. Just a little better than Kyle. If Kyle's here, Derek's right around here. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, the, the later, the later round draft picks, I like Kevon Wallace, Jack Driscoll, uh, the, the lineman from Auburn. Um, I really liked him. John Hightower. I know that was a pick that upset you, Greg. Uh, I well, think- the guy I wanted 
until yeah. in the fifth or sixth round. So uh, yeah, yeah, I still could have had him. I think it was. I think that was. I think Hightower was the time when you were you were texting. You wanted the uh, receiver from Michigan, and then we got yeah, Donovan Hightower. Peoples Jones. Um, I really like uh, Greg Hall, resident Browns fan. <laughs> like I really, really wanted Donovan Peoples Jones from Michigan. I think he's the steal of the draft. Uh, he suffered. You want to talk about poor quarterback play with Jalen Rager? Uh, he suffered some of the worst quarterback play I've seen in the Big Ten since I was a baby. Uh, Shea Patterson, a transfer in from Michigan to Mississippi, I think his second or third year, I think second full year as the starter in John Harbaugh's offense, Jim Harbaugh, whatever the hell Harbaugh coaches in Michigan, I think John. And, uh, oh, my God. Number one, their offensive coordinator bolted to the NFL. I think he went to the Colts. So this new offensive coordinator, and instead of calling, like, instead of calling the snap on a down, like, on three, go hut hut hut. They go like this to sit oh, over. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, when you see him go like this, you're off as an yeah. edge rusher. Yeah. Like it, it's so bad. And uh, Shea Patterson can't throw a ball more than 20 yards down the field. So I think Donovan Peoples Jones is going to be a steal for the Browns. Unfortunately, they have Landry and OBJ, so his target share is going to be, you know, not that great, especially as a rookie with no off season. But I'm telling you now, I don't love DPJ. Yeah. Um, I think it was it was Hightower, right, that had the fastest uh, 40 in uh, – Second. 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 Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was Quez Watkins, the sixth-round pick. Okay. That's, he's the burner, right? Like, yeah. that's what this dude is. Somebody put on Twitter some of his tape, and I was watching it. And he made this awesome he, – he ran a slant, did a – like, caught it, did a stutter move backwards. Dude completely fell over him, jumps over him, and darts off to the end zone. And the guy's like, he's off to the races. He's pulling away. And as he says he's pulling away, the D-back catches up to him and pushes him. <laughs> and I was like, this is the tape you put on uh, Twitter, this guy who's a freaking burner. You put a freaking thing where he's off and he gets tackled. I'm like, oh, my God. Nice. But he's got – you could tell he's got speed for days. The reason he got caught up with was because when he made that stutter move, he was going from zero to 60 while the other guy was already going 60. Yeah, so yeah. I get it, but, like, <laughs> it was just really funny to me. <laughs> it's – yeah. Um, so yeah, you got him, you got Quez Watkins like you were just talking about, uh, those two, I, again, I like, I like the fact that you went and got a bunch of wide receivers. However, it feels like you're like, you're doubling down because you know, you're going to screw one of these or two of these picks up. Um, yes. but, but yeah, I, 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 I like that Sean Bradley, the young kid from temple, um, sucks. Yeah. Again, another one He's of those. Awful. Another one of those Projects. linebackers that that look looks like a a fat safety. You know what I mean? Like they're Listen, way too small to be a linebacker. South um, Jersey kid won a bunch of track awards in Jersey. Likes the Eagles. Like it's I, a good come home story. Played at Temple. You know, but like it's a sixth round pick, so it's whatever. And I appreciate that Howie actually pulled some tra uh, some trade magic out of his hat on the third day and acquired so many picks. Um, but th that's a flyer that you hope in three years can develop into something. And if not cut them in two or three years, um, to me, you have, when you woke up on Sunday, you have four receivers that were not on the team on, on, on Thursday morning, right? Like in, and that's pretty crazy to me that you went from, from Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey, Greg Warden, J jaw to now those four plus Marquise Goodwin, Jalen Rager, Quez Watkins, and John Hightower, the problem with Hightower and Watkins, and it's not so much any fault of those guys. We, we said speed. Carson's got to love it, you know, especially from a return standpoint. They got returns down pat. We'll have return men. But do you know the only semi, semi-successful wide receiver the Eagles have taken in the fourth round or later in the past 15 years? No, it's blanking me. I don't know. It's Riley Cooper. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Like, so like, Riley he's like I think I think I read a stat where he's the only Eagles draft pick in the fourth or fifth round or later that has more than three catches. Oh no! In a season, like I think I read that. But even still, like Shelton Gibson, nothing. Josh Huck, he was a third rounder, nothing. Um, These are all guys that Carson is thrown to. Like I can't even think of Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the Eagles, meanwhile, thought it would be a smart move for Carson to trade for Doriel Green Beckham. Yeah. yeah. 
what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. So, like, the probability of these guys, like a Hightower or a Watkins, being fourth round or later picks, like, working out is low. It's not so much against them, maybe even not so much against the Eagles coaching staff or development. It's just the fact that they're day three receivers in a draft class that was historically deep. We don't know if that's true or not yet. But, like, you just got to love the fact that they have a tool you can't teach, and then we'll trust the coaching staff to teach the rest. Yeah, that's again, that's always my, my one thing, specifically for receivers. Have the speed, and then ideally, you know, the coaching will get them to do the rest. Um, What's and, and, the only, the, and hands, too. Uh, I was going to say, so like, what, what to you is the only trait Instead of, like, we know you can't teach speed, but there's a lot of other things you can teach. What's that other trait besides speed that you want most in a wide receiver? It sounds like hands is yeah, it Yeah, speed you. and hands. Or, or maybe even hands and speed, uh, but, but yeah. Okay. One or the other. I am. Whatever. I am. Uh, I'm stuck between route running and, like, red zone presence. Like, go up and get it. I'm yeah. not sure. I, am, I think I'm more on the lines of route running because we've seen some ugly shit, uh, stuff. I'll say stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, we've, seen, that's okay. we've seen some After ugly nine, stuff. After nine, we can. We're, we're fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's you're right. It's um, the 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 go up and get it. You know, I I, I think of that almost as the tight end nowadays in the NFL. But you're right that yeah. that for a wide receiver. I mean, that's Alshon Jeffrey when when he's relevant. That's that's what he does best is professional. Just, just let me go up and you know just just lay it up to me. You know, and that's yeah. that's that's what again when he's at his best uh, and, and keeping his mouth shut behind the scenes. Um, yeah, that's what that's what what, what I hope here. is what I hope is from Hightower and Watkins is they can have speed for days. But if you can't separate from a, from a D back, there's not much to it. Yeah. And I hope these guys have separation like there's the there's a difference. It's how you get off. It's the steps you take. It's the cuts you make that it's not just your A to B line speed. There's more to it and your acceleration. So I hope that those guys have that, too, and can kind of separate from a D-back because I am tired of watching Carson throw balls in the tight windows because he does it the most in the NFL. And as and as good as he is at it, I'm just kind of tired. I'd like to see him just have a receiver who can separate a little bit. Yeah, if there's one thing, I do think that uh, that's the one thing Rager is going to have is just that I can get away from you ability. Now, he, he might not have the hands, we will see. Uh, you you mentioned it. Bad quarterback play, um, a lot of uncatchable balls, um, but the drops were a problem for him in college. So uh, yeah. we'll we'll have to you know keep an eye on that. And obviously, as Eagles fans, we'll all be the first to bitch and moan when and if he does drop one. Um, yeah. So so well with with that um, the I would say that the one guy that we know has separation that's a newly acquired target is Marquise Goodwin. That guy can separate. He's yeah. a shoo, He's a burner. Yeah. Now it's is he going to separate a part of his body as well to <laughs> stay on the field yeah. is going to be a big one. Um, you know, and and that's again, there was a big theme with what the Eagles did this off season in addressing their wide receiver core, and I do appreciate that. For as much as I'm going to get on them, and most of my gripe, honestly, is about the second round pick, and we'll we're gonna we'll get into that. The There's second, a reason we haven't talked. Yeah, about the this. second and third round picks for me were were just atrocious, and and, and yeah. that 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 those two picks actually pissed me off to the point where I I didn't like the regular pick anymore. Although now that I'm <laughs> back here and I'm like I'm, I'm being level headed, I'm like all right, I I do like a lot of things out of regular the big problem with it and we've said it moment one is where was the value with that pick um yeah. but i love his name oh i could say his name all day <laughs> yeah jalen rager oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um what'd you think of the eagles not drafting a corner um you know it's like it's one of those things where i i, I went into it wanting a cornerback obviously as, as much of us did but I didn't want – no. I didn't want the Eagles to get, like, blinded by certain positions, although they absolutely got blinded by the one position I did want them to get, uh, which was at least wide receiver. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, you know, stacking a couple linebackers, a safety, um, it was it was a little, a little uh, different, I guess, that they didn't go cornerback, but um, – you know, especially because you've seen uh, you've seen some some recent success with like even Jalen Jalen Mills was a seventh round pick. 
Yeah. Um, this isn't a league anymore where you can get away with just one cover corner in Darius Slay. Like, you need multiple shutdown corners. And I, and I like with what Roby Coleman brings in the slot, but we have so many slot cornerbacks. Like, that's why I don't think Logan Ryan makes sense as a free agent. I think the Eagles need to go out and they need to get another cornerback via free agency. And there are some good ones. I think the big name out there, the one that I think I would want to see the most is Prince of Mukamara. It's a little older, but the commitment doesn't have to be large. And I think that would fill a gap as a, as a cornerback too. And I would feel comfortable, especially with all those Cowboys weapons and, and all that. And Darius Slayton from the Giants who burnt us twice last season and McLaurin. Like, I would feel much more comfortable with the Prince of Mukamara as, as CB2 with a Rolby Coleman in the slot. He'll be there anyway in the slot, but I don't feel great about the secondary. Like, Do you, I don't. Slay and, and McLeod are just about it for me. What do you think of uh, Avante Maddox or Cravon LeBlanc possibly moving back and playing safety? Where I guess is Rasul a, Douglas going to do that? Like, who else other than Jalen Mills is going to be back there? Right. Rasul Rasul's too slow. I think he's shown flashes. Sidney Jones has shown flashes, um, just not consistent enough. That's why I don't think they're going to be good CB twos. I think they're going to probably switch off. Uh, Maddox, I think, does a really nice job in the slot, but you have Roby Coleman, so maybe I don't know where that's going to go. Maddox can play the outside. Uh, he might even win the job. I actually wouldn't mind that. He's probably you now thinking about it. Probably my favorite to be a CB two. Craven to me is is the best transitional back to kind of go back and forth. I almost think he came in as a safety or has played safety in the past. I I can't remember. But you could have Craven and Kavon, baby. Like that to me is awesome. <laughs> that's 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 a broadcaster's nightmare. Is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> they would go last name only on that one. But yeah, I would at uh, least at I, least with this team you could say Jalen and like you'll get almost anybody right. Now. You know what's yeah I know right. You know what sucks. Jalen Wentz. Uh, you know what sucks oh, no. is about the Eagles cornerback or about the Eagles secondary is that you have Darius Slay and then a whole bunch of problems and like a whole bunch of like meh. It's like the Phillies rotation. It's just like there's there's the top and then it's a steep decline. And, yeah. And I kind of think like the same with the Eagles secondary. Yeah. I again I like I like Maddox uh, and and LeBlanc, but again both of them. Can they stay on the field? Um, I I like Mills, but I don't know that he's going to translate to safety. Um, I don't like Mills. So I like I like certain things about his game. I should say. I think as uh, I think we've seen far worse uh, CB twos in 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 uh, in Midnight Green. I don't know if that's maybe the best or worst criteria to grade him out as. Um, yeah, I'm five eight two forty, and I could get Jalen Mills to bite on a double move. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and that as a safety is going to be really alarming because, you know, I think the good thing, though, is the safety. They're not playing press a lot. So, like, if he gets beat on a double move 30 yards down the field, what receiver is doing that? He might. So that's the that's, thing, though. If, any, thing. if there's anyone that's going to get beat on a double move that far away, it's Jalen Mills. I mean, I yeah. like him, but and maybe I like I, him just because he's the Green Goblin. But it is. What I it have is. hope. I have hope that he could be a decent safety. He's got injury problems himself, by the way, but I have problem or ho hope that he could be a good safety because of the play <laughs> against Julio Jones in the playoffs in 17 that, that won us the football game, even though Julio came down out of bounds. I, I have faith in him for that as a guy who, even though he's way undersized and, and, you know, could have problems down the field against the Julio Jones uh, type player. He went up and made the play. So, like, I, I appreciate that about him. He's a he's a go-getter. He's a go-getter. Yeah, yeah, and you've seen some physicality out of him and out of uh, Rasul Douglas. Um, but, again, yeah. both of both of them are, are very prone to the double move. And and yeah. uh, more so Douglas. He's he's just slow. He's um, slow, and that's the and that's the problem. Yeah. Sidney Jones. Sidney Jones is supposed to be a top 10 pick, fell us in the second round right after Minnesota snatched up Dalvin Cook from our hands. Or maybe we took him instead of Dalvin and Dalvin went to pick after Minnesota. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, I think I think Minnesota got him right before we, uh, we got I think him. it was the pick before or the pick after. I'm pretty sure it was the pick before. I was in Target when that happened, watching on my phone. I almost walked into the bathroom and cried. <laughs> uh, you know where the, the, overall, the other time that happened? Ha ha Clinton Dix when he got drafted by uh, by the Packers. That was another I love one that was like, oh, that was my guy. That would have been perfect for them at the time. I digress. But he can't, he <laughs> fell flat and fast, and yeah. we had an opportunity to get him this offseason. And the Eagles apparently, listening to like a lot of Eagles podcasts with a lot of Eagles insiders, they, they were hot on him, and they, they were going to take him. 
uh, apparently. And and they had a chance this offseason to sign him for nothing, and and they didn't. So that's how far Ha Ha Clinton Dix has fallen, and and that's a shame. Um, so yeah, we talked about them not drafting a corner, us having to go get one. Um, there was a pick in the sixth round that I wanted to talk about for a second. The Prince Tega Wanago, Wanago, mm -hmm. um, apparently was a third round profile. <laughs> would say. Let's take a listen. <laughs> <laughs> profile, <laughs> profile is more of a third, fourth rounder, and we apparently got him in the sixth as a steal. People are saying he could be the best out of this whole class, even more than Driscoll. I mean, we basically drafted Auburn's offensive line this draft. Um, a lot of places are giving that pick an A or an A+. plus. So um, I'm interested to see what he turns into. Yeah, you know, I didn't even think about that until until now. Like, you know, maybe maybe those guys work work well together on the second unit. You know, some instant chemistry. Um, yeah, but but it's no, a shame. I, I like I like both. It, it's you know it, it's cliche, but I like both of the the line picks. You know, I, I, obviously we haven't seen anything from them, um, but I believe Driscoll can also play a little bit of guard. Um, so you know that's that's also to have a flexibility, especially as a as a, as a rookie is going to help. Um, I mean, something that we're going to have to take into consideration is these guys are more than likely. I mean, it's not even more. They're not going to have OTAs. It's going to be like nah, it's a virtual you know, off season. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be like they're going to be playing drills on Madden or something. Matter of fact, while we're on the Madden EA, you're the least likable gaming developers on the p planet Earth. Can can we get That's Madden? Right. Can we get Madden early this year? <laughs> 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 yeah you're just using the same engine guys don't tell me you can't <laughs> it's it's do it was ready update. last year just can yeah can you give us the, the update or you know um, yeah but, i wonder if they're gonna do a ps5 and xbox series x version this year or they're gonna wait till next year uh, yeah. How, I, yeah, I don't they're know coming out they're coming out like before the the holiday season right the the, new the, the the games come out in august and the consoles come out this holiday neither one has an official release date but they're both slated for the holidays so. yeah oh boy I, I can't believe we're sitting here talking about a draft, an Eagles draft that did not include a defensive lineman. Like, that's a shock to me. Yeah. We always go for the well, trenches. Uh, what do we get? DE at uh, in round seven, right? Casey two. He was a total. he's a linebacker. Oh, he's is he? Okay, he's, he's listed as a DE on on the on the board. Uh, CBS has him as a linebacker. Maybe yeah. he's like a hybrid. So then, yeah, he's probably a three four. Uh, maybe yeah. they'll use him as an edge rusher. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Casey Tuhill, edge rusher from Stanford. Um, That's where all the great edge rushers. That's an edge rusher factory. It's a, oh man, we didn't even get into that yet. Can <laughs> edge we, rusher factory, baby. Can we talk about the, the Eagles? Aren't even look. I'm an Eagles fan, right? The Eagles aren't even the Crayola factory, let alone <laughs> a quarterback factory. Dude, like, is Howie Roseman thinking that? that he was like running the whole Andy Reed error or like, does he think this is 2002? Like, where do you get off saying that you're a quarterback factory when you just had to draft another quarterback because clearly you don't have any faith in Nate Sunfeld. Uh, did you ever hear the term, uh, dress for the job you want, not the job you have? <laughs> kind of what I think about, like, He's making that up. He just it's, flat lied. It was just uh, like, uh, I mean, it was just, it's a quarterback factory. <laughs> think about this, too. You know what the craziest thing is? When the Jalen Hurts pick happened, it was round two of this year, pick 53. Oh, the one before that was 21. The pick before that, the last pick they made in 2019 was round five with Clayton Thorson, who, by the way, couldn't make the team as a rookie. Not in the that league, means, by the way. That means t at one point in this draft, two of your last three draft picks were quarterbacks with Carson. You're a quarterback factory, but you're pulling out the worst product ever. Yeah. This is yeah. not made in America, my friend. Yeah, this is it's, bad. It's it's very poor factory. It's shoddy Someone, work. Uh, somewhere along the production line, something <laughs> broke. Uh, um, and, I and, appreciate the pick, just not at 53. I love Jalen Hurts, and I'm I'm happy we have him. Yeah. Not at 53. Yeah. I again, I'm I'm actually I'm, I'm completely with you. Love Jalen Hurts, just with a team with. I mean, we talked about it on on what was it Friday? Everything's everything's the same anymore. We talked about it Friday where this team has so many needs, and yet through this draft they, I guess, decided all right, well we only have one need, wide receiver, and now we're gonna go and play around and like 
the the best argument not even saying it's a good one the best argument is that the you know you're you're paying Carson so much so that you need a backup on the cheap but I mean to, to just throw Jalen Hurts now into a, a quarterback who is on like he's not a finished product he's not NFL no. ready and I'm a I'm he's, a fan of his he's uh, ripe for the factory but but he. Now you're saying what if this was last year you're gonna put him in instead of Josh McCown or whatever you know and it's like all of a sudden he wins the game against the Seahawks a, a rookie he doesn't get sacked he doesn't get sacked on fourth and seven from the twelve like he I mean, doesn't get sacked there oh, I don't know how Josh McCown didn't just throw it up <laughs> he's a veteran of forty seven years like uh, come on it, it's just it, it to me um you you need to be doing everything you can to be make like. At pick two, you got Miles Sanders last year with your second round pick. Like you need to be getting people that are instantly contributing. Now with Jalen Hurts, the best thing we can do is hope that he never contributes for this team. And that's that's how in, in that's the best way that that pick works out is that Carson Wentz stays healthy and you never have to use him. Or and you're gonna outsmart yourself and you got Taysom Hill because they already mentioned him. At it's, fifty three, you had Epinesa. You had Christian Fulton, the cornerback out of LSU, uh, Epinesa being the, I think, offensive lineman from Iowa, defensive lineman from Iowa, I think offense. And then you had Denzel Mims from Baylor, the wide yeah, receiver. that's who I was texting, Mims. And, Mims. and Denver went Judy and K.J. Hamler back-to-back. They gave Drew Locke weapons. So we at 53 were sitting there, and I texted you, and I said, all right, guaranteed one of these three guys. And then I said, dot, 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 but they probably won't pick any of them. Little did I know that within two minutes, the next text would be, aw, F. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it's, and I texted, like, we took the dude from Oklahoma. And I thought that was a joke because somehow, some way, Twitter knows draft picks six minutes before they are announced. And so I try to stay off of Twitter when that happens. But at the same time, you just can't sometimes. So I'm going through Twitter and I see everyone's like is howie drunk is this that is this and i'm like what's going on i finally see the pick and i'm like <laughs> they're joking right and goodell who eventually sat down had a drink and was wearing shorts uh making yeah, those picks it was awkward it was super I, I, awkward you know what goodell just go back to us all hating you i don't i didn't like the yeah. like audition for likable roger that that didn't work <laughs> that did but, not but work. i will say this virtual draft all it did was prove that this is a better way to hold the draft than the uh, reg the regular way. I liked this a lot more than yeah. the regular draft. Those NFL posted a video of all the teams calling the players, and I was like crying. I was yeah. crying. It was awesome. No, yeah, it, it's uh, I'm I'm with you on that. Like watching watching players, like they're they're literally their dreams are coming true, and, and a lot of these guys even know it's gonna happen, but still yeah. that moment is so big for them. And yeah, I mean as a human, you gotta be happy for other humans rambunctious in chat says yeah, it's got to yeah. be a cover-up he can't admit this, he was thinks, well Wentz can't stay healthy what do you think <laughs> yeah i saw this i was gonna i was gonna pull it up uh and and here's the thing with that uh nick is if 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 that's truly how they feel then why the hell did you just give him a hundred million dollars like you yeah, you could have waited ago. carson is the guy and either way if he's not the guy you're screwed like i know nick Foles came in and saved the day once but you can't build a team like around your backup quarterback. Carson has an out though. He has an out for 2022. So I mean, if he I'm has Carson, an out. if I'm Carson Wentz after that draft or after that specifically that second round pick, I'm pulling an Aaron Rodgers and I'm like, oh, I must have let his, his daughter or whatever. What was what was that tweet? Did you see this? Aaron no. Rodgers was like, oh, he must have the GM must have let one of his kids pick, make that pick when they like traded up and got. Uh, his Love. eventual replacement um, i don't i does that real like i yeah yeah that I think, yeah like that Twitter was like thing. no I, i'm i'm like 94 percent sure that that was like a real aaron Rodgers thing I'll, I'll uh let me let me look around while you're doing that on, is aaron Rodgers even on twitter <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know well while you're talking about that I, it's like He's gotten out after 2022. It's going to take the factory a couple of years to kind of get him up and running. So, I mean, it, it does make sense. This. And I appreciate the Eagles having a plan. The only thing the Eagles have said that made sense to me as to why they made this pick, 
because everything else they said, they're just shoveling the dirt on top of their own grave and they're just making excuses. There's one thing that I'm like, all right, Howie, I, I know that that's true and I appreciate it, albeit again at 53 is tough. The average money spent on a backup quarterback is $8 million. The Eagles at one time invested $11 million. Now that got him a Super Bowl with Nick Foles, but $8 million is the average for a backup quarterback. Jalen Hurts is going to cost you nothing for four years. So I appreciate that. You can take that money and put it into other uh, ways to better the team, whether that be the secondary, um, Carson, uh, wide receiver, whatever. Like I'm cool with that logic, but at the same time, 53 is crazy. I firmly believe he would have been there in the third round when they picked uh, Taylor from Colorado. Yeah, and again, um, that 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 same argument you can be using that draft or you know that cap on a defensive end or you know another wide Mims like that also would have been on the cheap. So you still would have had somebody on the cheap, you know, other than. But I do I do get the point that or at least most quarterbacks. Uh, demand a little bit more money um and, that, right, and that's value I, I brought that that's that's like the one that's the one shred of like sanity i can find through this whole thing um because it's value because wouldn't you wouldn't you rather pay real quick hurts next to nothing than a joe flacco eight million dollars like well what did winston get because that's winston, that's where let me see what Jameis winston got because that's yeah that's, where I'm, that's a good thought that's a good thought he's now with the saints he has thrown more passes to Saints players than Taysom Hill has. <laughs> True. The funniest meme. Wait, is that of, real though? Or, yeah, like, it's real. He's thrown ten <laughs> interceptions against the Saints. I thought oh, that was that's, funny. That's that's that was really fantastic. really funny. I'm, I'm I don't want another Taysom Hill though. Like that's the problem. Yeah, I don't look, want um, to a second round Taysom hit Taysom Hill. He was an undrafted player. So even that, the value of a Taysom Hill is five rounds difference. Look like. Think of the value. Christian Fulton was a projected first-round pick out of LSU. Does Howie hate the SEC? Does Howie hate LSU? Um, like, you could have had Fulton. You could have had Epinesa, who, for a guy who loves to build through the lines, you could have improved an aging offensive. Brandon Brooks, as great as he is and arguably the best offensive lineman on the team, ain't getting any younger. Hurt his elbow again last year. Lane Johnson's had trouble staying healthy. Jason Kelsey's going to retire soon. Like, this offensive line that's so great and powerful needs to be replenished. And 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 uh, I can't even think. Andre Dillard is is not right now. We don't even know if he's a sure thing, even though he was a first round pick to to replace Jason Peters. So like you had an opportunity to help your line or to get a second speed receiver or to great get a really good CB two outside of Slay, and you chose to take a quarterback who at best will play twenty percent of snaps. And I'm like. And that's that's on the high side. And that, to me, is not value. All these national people that are like, you got to draft for the future and it's more than just next year. Mother effort. Do you don't you don't think there's going to be another athletic quarterback out there in the next year or two that they could pick in the later rounds and develop? Yeah. No, they picked Jalen Hurts because Carson Wentz isn't he might not be here in 2022 when he has that free out. I just don't know. And I don't want there to not be I don't want there to be uncertainty. Like Carson finally had a hold on this team. It was finally his team. No more Nick Foles. No more distractions. Be your team. And now he is in another controversy that he didn't need to be in. And the fans are surely making this more of a controversy than it needs to be. But it's still there. How he did this to himself. Yeah, and, and especially with Philadelphia, the backup is always the most popular player in town. You just you just drafted the most popular player in town. And again, with the second pick. Wait, like it's if this was the fourth pick, it makes sense. And again, I, like just just not even, even the third, not even even the third. Yeah, but you're, I'd have you're taking them in the third. Your second, even your third, they need to be starters. They need to be guys that you have at least hope can contribute this season, which there are Super Bowl expectations for. You cannot be wasting a second round, or in my opinion, even a third round pick on a backup quarterback when there are I'd other options fine. out there. I'd have been fine at 103. You have Davion Taylor, or I think his name is, the linebacker from from Colorado. Sure, he can fly, but he's a project too at a position that the Eagles don't really value. If that's going to be a pick that could just be just as well be a bust, I'm fine. Wouldn't you rather have Jalen <laughs> well, Rager and one of the three people I named, and then and Jalen Hurts too? You can have it all. Knowing what I know to, now, absolutely yes. But right. just from but that is a reality. From that like all a could have happened. from a feel like from my own like draft like you know philosophy 
I wouldn't take a backup quarterback with a third round pick. Now, from a player standpoint, I get it. Jalen Hurts is he's worth it, um, you know, potentially at least. Uh, but like again, Super Bowl expectations. I'm not happy with that with that pick. And when when you could have gotten a veteran, I know for more money, but there's there's Super Bowl expectations, right? And now you're thinking a rookie can come in and do that. That's yeah. that's that's more unheard of than Nick Foles coming in and doing it, which was from the anomaly to the rule, not like what is always going to happen. Jake from State Farm, who got drafted by <laughs> you, Buffalo. You said that every time too. Yeah. Because I think I started. If if Jay Ziggy's around, she might have started to get tired of that. Like every time, from every time they said from, I was like State Farm. <laughs> like just, Jake it was from like, oh, and <laughs> and Easton. I can't remember Easton's first name. Both highly touted quarterbacks, both with high upside, both potential starters, were there on day three in the fourth round. Uh, so I am I am ultimately we'll never know. And and guess what? Hypothetical is a hypothetical, but. I am firmly in firm in my belief that Jalen Hurts would have been there at 103. There are not many teams that are quarterback needy in this draft, or I'm sorry, in this class. The Patriots are clearly not in the market for a quarterback right now. They're going to give it to the kid because he's got to be the successor to Brady. Let it fail for a, a year. They'll go. They'll get a high pick and they'll go get Trevor Lawrence. Like Bill Belichick is is probably going to end up with Fields or Lawrence next year, um, or he'll trade for Carson, or he'll trade for Hurts. No Cam but, Newton. Like, no Belichick not right, getting Newton. No, Cam's not going to go there. I don't know where the hell Cam's going to go. Could've, but Cam could have came here. I, yeah, well, that that had been even worse than Jalen Hurts, man. That would have been a true controversy. <laughs> another, but but do you think even if this whole I don't I don't believe it when everybody on Twitter is like they're just drafting him to trade him in a year or two. Like then why take him? Yeah. To me, if that was real, which I don't think it is, you're not going to get better than pick number 53 for that. No, no, yeah. If, if that's if, if that's the case, then they still messed up the pick. <laughs> like yeah. if, you're like, okay, well, you just figured out an, another way that they thought they outsmarted themselves. Um, and well, again, they always have to be the smartest. And again, I like Jalen Hurts. I, I don't want to. I don't want to make this seem like this is. Uh, and and I hope he's not getting this impersonation either. This isn't Philadelphia bashing Jalen Hurts. This is Philadelphia questioning our general manager or questioning our organization's commitment to who we all were told and expect is our franchise quarterback. I I think Doug Peterson is a smart, uh, underrated. He looked really happy about that pick when they showed head it. coach, and he and he seemed very very giddy, and that's a good thing for me as a guy who this wasn't Howie's pick. Like Doug clearly had a say in this. So like that's cool for me. It gives me a little bit more hope for the Hertz pick. And I think Doug is creative enough, especially with a new offensive coordinator. I think this team's, well, I'm sorry. They don't have a, a true offensive. It's whatever the hell they've divided their offensive coordinator into. But like, to me, I think there's a creative, creative enough team behind the scenes that can find interesting ways to use Jalen Hurts. Heck, I read one scout today said they think it could, it could be a straight running back and like they could use them all over the field. I, that intrigues me. But like, are you really going to implement the Wildcat four years after the Wildcat died? I, I don't I don't know if that's smart. Like you don't always have to be one step ahead of your competition in terms of like setting the trend. I just think you can't get left behind adapt or die. You don't always have to be at the front of that adoption. So like, again, we're not bashing hurts the guy or hurts the player. We're bashing the, the fact that we're never going to get to hear Merrill say hurts to hurts. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, in, and again, in the most ideal of situations, he, he just never plays. Um, yeah. And, and, so what you in a Super Bowl expectation except season, in week seventeen, except yeah, in week seventeen, yeah, or like a couple, because even even the whole oh we'll bring them in for sneaks, but that's Carson Wentz's game. You're gonna take a yeah fourth and gonna, one is his. You're end. gonna take away a tool, and it's he's, he doesn't get hurt on quarterback sneaks, like he gets hurt on freak plays, and this whole like he's not injury prone, like this whole notion I that agree. first off myth number one, his rookie season, sixteen games started and completed, like mm -hmm. let's get that myth out of the way. He has played a full season. This has happened. So we can, uh, to all the people who say he can't finish, he's never played a full season. That's happened. You're just he like, just played one. People the playoffs people aren't part of the who regular. say that like it's like they speak falsehoods so much that they believe it, and it's like yeah. and then that more people believe it. Worst off, and it's like okay, Wentz has done that. Secondly, the whole injury prone thing. 
Mike Vick was injury prone. That was my guy, right? I was one of the bigger Mike Vick fans. I'm willing to admit Mike Vick was injury prone. Why? Because every third time that he pulled down and ran, he had a hamstring injury. It was a yeah. problematic area. Carson Wentz had a head injury one year, an ACL one year. Like, it was all completely different. So this whole notion that Carson Wentz is injury prone, I just don't buy it. And in my yeah, opinion, I, I, I look agree. at Carson Wentz and I say that is one hell of a football player. He's gotten hurt twice making football moves. Um, one, and well, then the back, and then the back injury. Which, yeah, I'll give you that. That's a legitimate injury. Now, that wasn't like a freak one, but you know, give the guy one. Exactly. Now again, if if he hurts his leg again, or if he hurts his back, then you start to think, okay, this guy is injury prone. But uh, until then, uh, I don't buy the injury prone thing. I think this guy is is still a franchise quarterback. Um, I have all the faith in the world in him, which is why this pick is so befuddling. Because you should be Again, why can't we do what the Cowboys are doing and just building a team around? They don't even have a franchise quarterback, and they're building a team around the quarterback. I hate, Seattle. I hate giving the Cowboys credit, by the way. Seattle. Don't give them credit, then. Give it to Seattle. All right, let's do that. Seattle That's built good. That helps. About, I don't need Seattle to take got rid shower. of the Legion of Boom. <laughs> they got rid of the Legion of Boom because of their voices in the locker room, and they wanted it to be Russell Wilson's team. And then they built around him with – uh, Lockett and Chris Carson, and they brought back Lynch DK. 73 times and uh, D DK Metcalf. So, like, this is that's Russell Wilson's team, and that's what I thought was happening here with Carson with the Eagles. And listen, in my lifetime, I am this is Carson Wentz is the quarterback I trust most in my lifetime to bring us a Super Bowl champion. That includes the guy who brought us a Super Bowl championship because uh, Carson played 14 games that year. If that ACL tear was a non-contact injury like Deshaun Watson's in practice, I'd say, all right, you know, maybe there's something to the prone thing. He got hit by a guy who dove in and smashed his leg with his helmet, his knee with his helmet. Like, that is a freak injury, just like you said. I think the back injury might have happened on a weird play, like a pileup against the Cowboys. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. But the clowny thing was a late hit by a stooge who hit him in the back of the head. I can't stand the injury-prone label, and I can't stand the idiots – like, sometimes I think Twitter is just real life, where it's just idiots saying things other idiots say. It <laughs> bothers me like crazy. So I, I, I love Carson Wentz, and I just want it to be his team. Half of me doesn't like the Hurts pick just because I was so happy for Carson. I got to watch him enough to worry about his backup quarterback. Like, I just want it to be Carson's team. I get that they were being – they won't say it, but they're they're really drafting this kid – for insurance and i get that i totally get that but like if you think carson wentz is injury prone change the channel yeah yeah I, again i agree um and it was it, this was short insurance but this was like y you didn't need you didn't need that that high of a policy you know you could have you could have went for the silver the silver platter instead of like the the gold platinum or whatever you know and, and again yeah. Um, I, this, uh, I'll, I'll like, I, I think I'm, I feel like I'm repeating myself. So I'll, I'll try to say this one last time. Um, I like the player, uh, honestly in a quarterback class that I didn't like a lot of quarterbacks, Jalen Hurts is one of the few that I did like. Um, it just, it, it wasn't right for this team. Not now. And, and, and I thought you just laid out a lot of the, the behind the scenes reasons to it as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think from, from was my guy in this draft. Um, I'm happy that he went to the other team I root for, which is Buffalo, because as much as I love Josh Allen and I'm, an, I'm a huge Josh Allen supporter, I think that there could be a real good quarterback competition. I won't say controversy. I'll say competition from from if not, you know, but maybe next year, or the year after that. Um, Allen's not the most accurate quarterback. So that's something I would look forward to if I would if I was the Eagles and I got from and let's say the third or fourth round and I just brought him in as a good, solid, professional style quarterback who could not a comp or not a controversy but a competition so i'm going to push carson not someone that every single time carson comes up lame you're like controversy let's get the guy who can run his ass off in here and the second rounder oh that freaking tag of being a second rounder a top 55 pick is going to follow jalen hurts everywhere and i i this is not my words i heard this earlier today on a podcast but Every time Denzel Mims makes a catch or every time Christian Fulton makes an interception, Eagles Twitter will sit there and say, our guy's on the bench while their guy's making plays. And yeah. they're kind of right. Yeah, Mim, again, right. I was I, texting you right before it happened. Get me Mims right here. Um, Reg, Reger and Mims, like that would have been fantastic 
That would have been all Mims about got problems. He's, he's not a great, he's not a polished product, but he's got upside for days. Yeah, that's that was, uh, you know, that I was looking at that. You can even go on. Uh, the running back was out there. I mean, there was there was offensive positions. Jonathan right? Taylor. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's what it was. Um, yeah. Uh, so there was there was definitely you know you, there were there were offensive positions available. You could have switched it up, like you were saying, the cornerback. Uh, so Christian Fulton. Yeah, it, it. there was um. It, it, it was an interesting pick, and like I said, all I want for this pick is to not have to talk about it all year. Um, that's <laughs> going to. Oh, it's going to be a long yeah. offseason. Um, so. Overall, though, overall, like, um, you know, I know draft, dra- draft grades don't really matter, but if you had to go A to F on the draft as a whole, what are you giving it? Uh, I mean, it's like. I like I like the fourth round on. I like everything out of the fourth round on. Um, but you know, in my opinion, you failed on the first two days. Uh, so like, I'm in on Rager. Like, I'll go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like the, I like the player there. Um, but you you don't necessarily get the highest grade. Um, especially yeah. like you could have traded back. You could have potentially got another second or third round pick, then used it on Jalen Hurts. Um, you could have traded up, gotten CD Lamb. Like there was just, I like the player, um, but right now I'm I'm not like I'm not, I can't give Howie like if we're grading and I'm a little bit harder of a of a grader. I can't give Howie like that grade of a grade on on Rager right now, just purely out of what we know. Um, yeah. So like, would you trade? Would you trade Hertz, Davion Taylor, and Rager for CD Lamb? Yes. Yeah, I really would. Like that's why I was. I even said that in the beginning. Knowing what I know now, I would have given up one, two, and three just to get that CD Lamb pick. As long as they're not all going to the Cowboys. So yeah. Do you know CBS uh, Sports has Davion Taylor as an A? Yeah. Now? I mean, hey, I hope they're right, but ugh, I just where's he gonna play? What's like, he's a project. He's a project. He's gonna be a, a, a probably an outside linebacker. He's got speed. I think the one good thing about Davion mm-hmm. Taylor, we didn't really talk about him. He's probably the one we talked about least today. Yeah. Real quick, because I know we probably got to wrap soon. But like, Davion Taylor to me, where I'm happy and where I think he could make a big difference is in coverage, uh, because he's so fast. So just stick him on the tight end, and I think that he's got a role there. What I what I'm fearful of is like the run the run game. I probably don't have a lot of faith in him stacking against the line. He'll get mauled over by an offensive lineman. He could be a good outside kind of that blitzer, that late blitzer to come in with all that speed. So like he's got some promise, but he is a project. Yeah, here's what I'll always say uh, with a draft pick um, in general, whatever round they're in. If I can spot and see one specific skill set that I can I know will transfer over. It always makes me feel a little bit better. So if you're like, well, this guy's a one trick. I'm like, all right, well, that's better than a no trick. So <laughs> um, I, I, I will take that. And as a coaching staff, hope that, you know, the Schwarzenegger can can, can figure some things out in him. Um, and, and third round is where it starts to be okay to get into projects. Uh, but, you know, that's still – you want your first three picks, in my opinion, to, to – you want to at least hope that they can contribute uh, yeah. this season. And right now, we out of those first three picks, we think one is going to pan out for this season. Or we hope yeah. only one. I mean, you know, we hope one doesn't pan out, really. And, like, again, that's not us rooting against Hurts, but you're the backup, dude. We don't want you to play. Like, And there's no preseason, so we won't even get to see you. Like, there's not going to be a preseason this year, so we can't even root for you, really, in, in a preseason. Nah, he's just a big giant question mark, and I'm with you. You know, overall, I'm like, I'm at like a C, C minus. Yeah, I'm like, I'm yeah. like C minus D plus. Like, you know, like it, it's just it, the back end of the draft was. I really like it, but it's not enough to 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 take down what I see in the first the first three rounds. Now, you know, yeah. maybe maybe Tyler's. Yeah, a little bit uh he's the unknown um but right now i just i see a, a, he's a tweener and i can't i can't hold my faith in a tweener Kayvon's gonna be a starter in this league though i think that in a big way i think Kayvon wallace i think driscoll's got a good future that prince kid could be a you know that you know listen doug loves the rotation loves the lineman rotation mm-hmm. so 
I think you have two offensive linemen that fit that profile really well. I think you have two project linebackers and then Sean Bradley, um, who is just a good story. I hope he does well. You have four new receivers, shiny new toys for Carson. Uh, that includes Goodwin. So, like, I'm, I'm all about a lot of the – maneuvers that they made they even address safety like i said he could be the best player out of this entire draft outside yeah. of maybe rager but you didn't address corner you, you you reached real heavy on on a quarterback in round two and for that and the fact that in the days after the draft you haven't addressed that cornerback need yet via free agency that's a little upsetting and the fact that you've quite frankly you've talked out your ass and you've tried to have philly fall in love with this jalen hurts pick when we just don't let us brood, let us stew, let us tweet, and then we'll get over it as soon as the season starts because <laughs> once day one happens, we're ready for football, and it's not going to matter anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and not only that, they didn't, they didn't address running back too because I still think they really need to go out and get another running back. I know it's, it's, nowhere, like, it's nowhere on the list of needs like cornerback because we're talking, you know, we're probably talking third running back. However, I wouldn't mind, like, getting a, a, a second running back in and having Boston Scott be your third. Um but, but yeah. I'm not a big Boston Scott guy. Yeah, his average like, yards per carry was like 2.9. Like it wasn't great. Yeah, like I, I'm a big He's fan a of his. Kid, I'm a big fan of his. But as far as like the player, I'm not gonna invest stock. Like, oh, he's my backup running back of the future. Like I, that dude is. Like, I, I'm I'm bigger than him. Like, yeah, <laughs> I can see with with this draft. Listen, Shady's still out there. Boy, I hope that doesn't happen. Oh, like, move. <laughs> uh, oh yeah really you no i mean it? the fan I mean, look it'll be the same thing the analyst like when deshaun jackson got signed the fan in me was like yo i'm hype but the analyst was like this dude is washed up yeah, and i'm mad like, thing. yeah um but you know and then and then he went out there in day one and balled and i was like oh i'm hype i was wearing my mid my my black 10 jersey i was all you know and then game two happens and i'm like this is why i was not hype yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's why that's, that's exactly why i why like sh- guys good you no know, i was gonna say and that's that's exactly how i would feel about shady i would be exactly. looking for my old 25 shoes to kick out of you know and clean off uh, yeah. yeah that's why i like guys like jason avant best hands on oh, the oh no best hands on. he's a surefire <laughs> thing my yeah. friend i'll tell you that jason avant <laughs> man he's got hands like you wouldn't believe okay oh, like two catchers mitts man yeah. Anthony but, uh, drops the first one. <laughs> he doesn't drop a thing. But anyway, to your point about the running back position, that to me is something like somebody's getting cut somewhere. Yeah, you can yeah, yeah. pick it up off the scrap heap. Like, don't go trade for Leonard Fournette. That's film four million dollars. You don't need to spend. Uh, Miles is the guy. But I agree with you. You you do need another running back. It's not as far up as the cornerback position. Um, and uh, and and I'm trying to think what other like. D line. I don't think they have a good. I don't think their defensive end group is great. You got to hope Malik Jackson comes back healthy this year. That's a question mark. So this team's got question marks. You said it earlier. This is a team competing for a Super Bowl in 2020. I don't know if I agree. I think they're trying to build for 21 and beyond. And 20 is just like a cross your fingers and hope the Cowboys blow it again. I I don't know. The the other part of me, and this, I'm so sorry. I keep extending the show, but like the other part of me says this: if the Cowboys win the division, right? The Eagles win the division. They go, they play a home game against Seattle. That's all well and good. But as soon as Carson got hurt, the air was taken out of that stadium. We lost the game. We got nothing more than the Cowboys did, but a longer, they have a, like a couple more tee times than we did. And they got a higher pick and they got CeeDee Lamb. Part of me is just like pissed off because the, the roles were reversed. And Howie is there at 17 instead of Dallas. And we get that pick. All is right with the world. Like, that to me is so nuts to think about that it's great that we won the division. It's great that we got a home playoff game, but we watched Josh McCown get beat by the Seahawks for the second time by the same score. And it drives me up a wall. End of rant. Yeah. Last season was torture uh, all season long. And then you made the playoffs and then we were like, all right, the silver lining to this playoff to this season is that Carson Wentz is going to get playoff yes. experience. Oh, he got nine right. minutes of it. <laughs> he, got, he got nine That's minutes. That's real time. 38 That's seconds. Time. Like, I actually yeah. think it's like I still have that time, like, stuck in my head. I can't remember what I ate for breakfast today. It was a banana. But uh, nine minutes, 38 seconds. I can still remember that for whatever reason. Carson Wentz playing time uh, in, in that game. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, it's like 
yeah, all of those things. Because like there were so many problems with the offense, and and hey, these things are going to come come to fruition really soon once the season starts. And in my opinion, Howie Roseman did nothing for himself this draft but start the clock on him. He's going to be the first chip to fall if if this season is another. The last two seasons have been have been disappointments, right? Like we've made the playoffs, but they've been disappointments. If another well, disappointment, we were five and seven. Yeah. Twice. If 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 another season like that happens, someone has to go, and that's that's Howie Roseman. It's not Doug Peterson. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Sort of. I, I have you seen the first movie? Yes, that one I'm a fan. You know of. how Harry lived under the steps? Yeah, yeah. That's where Howie lived <laughs> in Jeffrey's house. All right, he ain't going nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. Yeah. All right, like that's the problem is Howie kind of has that shine on him, and uh, this this front office and coaching staff is pretty much locked in from a head coach and a, and a GM perspective. So, I don't know if the clock ticked on Howie because apparently. The national media says this is a really good pick, and people were texting him saying great pick, and I'm sure Jeffrey Lurie had to sign off on it. I'm yeah. sure of that. So, like, I don't know. I really don't. We'll I don't think we're we'll going to know until 2022. We shall see. Um, again, I'm not ru- – hopefully we go out, you know, these guys ball. We, we don't have to really see much of Hurts, and it's not, you know, not seen from again, but – I'm an Eagles fan first and foremost. I'd rather be wrong when it comes to me wanting, you know, to, to start the clock on Roseman. I hope he's here for five years, ten years, and we got more championships. Let's go with it. Um, Last question I'm going to ask but, you yeah. tonight. Last question. As we're moving Thanks. into the uh, final thoughts, too, for, for chat and anybody. Uh, if, we, if we missed anything, if you want to get into anything uh, at all, uh, Nick, thank you for, for chiming in as much as you did tonight. Oh, who man. who my my big question to you who scores more touchdowns this upcoming season if there is one Jalen Rager or Hightower Watkins and Goodwin combined uh well, that's close I'm gonna go Rager just because yeah me too just because yeah, I don't even think it's close yeah I still think he's gonna have the most playing time I think out of those three I like Goodwin and I'm still not sure what I'm gonna get out of the other two um so yeah we'll we'll see uh but yeah I, again um I like I like the player uh Jalen Rager I just I, I I'm just you know I my immediate gripe that night was that the value wasn't there and the more I look at it you could have moved back. You could have done so many creative things. It felt like a lot of general managers, and not only, I don't want to put this all in just Howie, it felt like a lot of uh, general managers lacked creativity uh, throughout this, other than San Fran, who was all over it, making wheeling Unless, and dealing. Um, except on day three. Howie, listen, Howie yeah, day had three, number 168 was, bit, from the yeah. Bennett trade, got 196, 200, 233 from the Bears, and 210 from the Niners, and not even forgetting the, the trade with the Dolphins where he got 170-something and then flipped it for the other pick. So he was wheeling and dealing. It was just on day three and not for C.D. Lamb. Yeah. Uh, Nick goes option B, so he was he was taking uh, the package deal with, uh, with I Goodwin got, and, I have, and, the, and the rookies. I have yeah. three for Rager, or maybe four, and then two for the for the combination plus Goodwin. Do, do uh, special teams count? It's no, like fantasy. this is receiving touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> this is receiving touchdowns. Uh, you know, that's and that's that's one thing too. Uh, real quick, as I, I'll I'll wrap up too. That's where these guys, you know, these speedy wide receivers, Rager even included, um, especially included. If anything, I think he's going to make an immediate impact on the return game. Um, maybe not kick returns since you don't really see them anymore, uh, but you know, the the punt return game. Certainly something that we lacked in last year once Darren Spro- I mean, the whole time Darren Sproles was out. Uh, so, you know, that, that was like a bit of a, a position in need uh, was the returner. And I do think that they've they've addressed that part of this uh, in this offseason as well. Yeah, if not with Rager, then with Hightower <laughs> yeah. or, or Watkins. Yeah, we're, I mean, even Goodwin potentially. Like, you got so many speed, like, speed options there. Uh, it yeah. should be interesting to see. I, I don't need to see Miles Sanders taking back kicks anymore. I tell you, that I don't want sure. Rager. I don't want my first round pick doing it. So, yeah, maybe. I would. Do I you mean, want to go back to the receivers we had last? <laughs> I guess. I guess it's. It, it depends. Like how much he's contributing. You know, if he's gonna, if he's gonna make an immediate impact in that passing game, then, uh, then I'm, I'm with you. 
But yeah. if you are just getting to the point where you want to, you know, maybe just get the ball in his hands and let the kid make a play in, in a setting that he's known for, um, because if you look at his tape, he's got some some dynamic kick returns, and he's even has yep. – uh, I shared it on Facebook.com slash War Room Philly. He's got his uh, Deshaun Jackson Deshaun moment Jackson. Um, mm-hmm. where it was like frame for frame, the same run back. Uh, so, nuts. you know, he's got that ability. Um, so, again, if, if if I need to just like take that kid and give him a shot of like of confidence, I might throw him back there, you know. Yeah. Um, or if the team just just needs it because sometimes, sometimes it's just bad back there. Um, but, but we'll see. I hope we get to that point. You know, I hope I hope. At some point, you know, in in, in fall, I'm, I'm we're talking actual, you know, football and and uh, you know, live sports. Well, you just have to have <laughs> high hopes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get there. We'll one day or another, we'll get there. So I'm I'm I'll be honest, I'm not in a rush. I would rather we as a society get back there as you know safe than rush it and you know get get anything else you know going like in a second yeah. spike if you will um, yeah eminem so. said it best be smart don't be a yeah <laughs> you, can fill, you can fill in the blank um so yeah with that guys uh, it's been a fun one um we, we've hit we've hit over the hour mark um oh if, we, we knew we were going to. <laughs> yeah that's 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 common anyway usually it's like when we're like we want to at least hit the hour mark uh, with, with Keith and I, especially, uh, so uh, but you had yeah. me on the show. You know you were going well. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, after it's it's crazy because like after the other night, it was like man, I'm doing an hour. It's like you know we just pop the bat, <laughs> pop the donut off the bat, and we're like, all right, I can I can do this, no problem. Um, but uh, best center fielder in the business. <laughs> we talking uh, Aaron Rowan? We talking Aaron Rowan? We talking <laughs> Warwick Timber Rattlers or whatever. <laughs> Oh, man, good times, good times. Um, but, yeah, with that, guys, uh, thank you all for tuning in. Greg, thanks for uh, for hopping in and being the guest uh, for for me this weekend, or this week, I should say. Oh, and this weekend. Um, yeah. Yeah, last, last week was fun. This week was uh, as well. Um, we'll be looking forward to having you uh, on a little bit more as well in the future. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, any final thoughts to make, Greg? Um, if I could just uh, talk about the show for a sec. Oh, yeah. Um, if, if you're out there, if you're out there, we would love your support. Uh, I host a podcast called uh, We Podcast and We Know Things. That's We Podcast and We Know Things. Find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, Castbox, wherever you get your audible goodness. And uh, we talk a lot of nerdy stuff: movies, TV, games, um, music, comic books. We do interviews. We've done 45 interviews on the pod. We had the host from Nick Arcade growing up, and we had stand-up comedian John DeCross. We had some 41 on the show. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of different guests on, and, and we would love you to come hang out with us. It's We Podcast, and we know things with the best damn voice in the business, Sam Matura. Yeah, I, uh, I noticed that every time I listen to you, I have to do everything in my possible, like, power – to not like text you like I'm in chat like it's like, like it's this or something. Like, People like, do it. People do like, it. It's, it's cool. It never gets old. Um, and I'm like, maybe I can at least tweet. You know, that's like what I'm trying to like. I'll at least make it public so I'm promoting the show. Uh, yeah, but, I feel you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 awesome stuff. Um, pretty much, you know, just like you were saying, it's it's anything anything pop culture. You know? So it's 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 great escape too. Um, so yeah, highly recommend. It. Ten out of ten would recommend. Um, appreciate that so yeah with that guys um and if you could my plug uh get down there if you have amazon prime go and go and link that get into twitch prime uh we did just get our sub button uh on after uh friday's draft show uh it was, it was a really proud moment for for keith and i uh we started this twitch journey about two years ago now um so yeah it was it was really fun it's gonna be uh, we've already uploaded it, and the uh, the emotes are coming. So to see uh, the War Room Philly logo in Twitch chat is going to be really cool. I can't wait to see it. So uh, I hope you guys, if you can, uh, you can subscribe to us, help support the show. Um, all of all of the money that we make from Twitch will will support our drug habits. Um, so no, no, it's going to go back to the show, and uh, you know we'll just we're going to keep making it, especially if uh, we're going to have to do a lot more online side of things uh it'll help go towards uh, that aspect so 
Um, again, we really appreciate it. Thank you guys all for building the community up to get to this point. Um, and yeah, with that, I'm Anthony Pinto. And I'm your resident Browns fan, Greg Hall. <laughs> and we are out of here.